Hi, that's part number 5 of DIY Dremel CNC and today I want to talk a little bit about how to use my machine, what software do I use, how to set it up and how to start moving because you are asking about this a lot. But before we start that, let's talk about some news about this machine. The first thing I wanted to talk about are the images that you sent me. Thank you very much for all the images of the videos of projects that you are building, I mean the DIY Dremel CNC that you are building, I really appreciate that and that's really encouraging to continue working on this project. Second thing, if you have designed something more for this project, if you have any questions or just want to share your progress, feel free to join my Facebook group, there is a link below. There are a lot of people right now, like 100 people that are building this machine or want to build one, so you can, you know, help each other. It's a perfect place for that. And the last thing that I want to show you is some changes that I did to this machine. I make it more beautiful and you know more compact so it is easier to transport. So let me show you what I did. The first thing is just cable management. I added some of this silicon stuff, I don't know what's the name of that, to wrap all of the cables together. So right now it is way easier for it to move. There is no way for the cables to, you know, stack together or something like this. And I also hide the cable of, the, of this motor inside the aluminum profile. I also hide all of the electronics inside this thing. There is Arduino and the GRBL shield on it. There is a USB port and here you connect the power supply. Also the electronics is protected from the dust and everything around. There are just four screws and you can also find this container on my Thingiverse. But you may ask how about the power supply because it was super big, bulky and ugly and definitely too powerful. And here is the new power supply. That's 12 volt power supply and the max current it can give us is 3 amps. It doesn't take more than about 1 ampere so you know this is even too powerful but it's way better to have a little bit too powerful than not powerful enough power supply. The last power supply that I used was definitely too powerful, but that was the only thing that I had. So right now I changed to this and you can easily plug this thing right there. Let's start with software that we need to use this machine. And as I said in my previous videos, we need CNC.js to control the machine, to send G-code to it. And we need Fusion 360 to design stuff and create G-code that will import into CNC.js and then start moving. Those are basically just two softwares that we need and with those two softwares you can use your machine without any problems. Let's start with software, then I will show you how to set it up and start moving. To make this part quicker, I already designed my thing in Fusion 360 and this is a very simple bowl. We will mill it in fine, this is a kind of wood. Once our design is ready, we can switch from model to cam view. And we have to start by setting up our process. So click right there, set up. And as you can see around our object, we have something called stock. So this is just like a material that we have. It depends on what you want to mill, but this reference point can be in different place. So you can put it, for example, there. Uh, then we can go to stock. And because I don't want my machine to mill the top of the object, I will set the top offset to zero and make side offsets a little bit bigger, like 4 millimeters. So that's basically all you have to do in this setup. You can also change these values if you want and you can click OK. And right now we actually have to start setting up the milling process. So let's start by clicking 3D and choose Adaptive Clearing. This is our geometry that we want to mill. You just have to choose what you want to mill. Then go to Tool and select your tool. I'm going to use this tool, the diameter of it is 3.175 and that's what you are going to use in a Dremel most of the time, but you can go smaller if you want. And about feed rates, this is very important. You know, let's try with 1000. Linear feed rate, this also should be a lot smaller, like let's try 600. Lean out also 600. Ramp feed rate, let's put 300. And plunge feed rate. Maybe 200, that's, you know, keep it a little bit smaller. Then we have height, and this is also very important. Just make sure that it wouldn't hit the object while moving. Also make sure that Z-axis carriage wouldn't hit the top of the X-axis carriage. 
Then we can go to passes and here is also a very important setting because this is how much of the material, how deep will mill on the each layer. So you have to keep it small. I set it to 3 millimeters and that seemed to work fine. So we have the first machining done. And now we have to choose from the 2D tab to the contour. It will cut out the object that you want from the material. This is a very useful function and you will use it a lot, I think. All of the speeds okay and we have our tool choose. Then go to passes and right here we have to set, it's called multiple depths right there and maximum roughing step down just like in the previous setting in the adaptive clearing. We have to set it to 3 millimeters and click OK. Alright, we have it, but there is one thing that I forgot about and it is called tabs right there. Turn it on and as you can see on the sides of our model we have a small elements, this is called a tab and that's basically what holds your object to the material while moving so that it wouldn't just, you know, go somewhere while moving. This is very important for safety reasons and all of that. Let's click simulate, turn on the stock and run the simulation. And right now our machine is cutting out the object that we want. Works perfectly fine. So let's close the simulation and click on post process. This is a function to export the G-code that you will import to CNC.js. Uh, let's choose right there GRBL. Let's leave everything as it is. Just change a name. Click OK. Save it. That's how it works in Fusion 360 right now. Let's connect the Dremel CNC to the computer and open CNC.js. We set reference point to center in Fusion 360, so right now we have to draw two lines to find the center of this object. We also have to fix this thing to the table of our CNC and to do so we have to drill two holes in the corners of this thing. When our material is secured, we have to move the reference point to the X on our material and to do so we just have to click on buttons in CNC.js and move the Dremel to exact this position. And for this we will use a very professional tool called a piece of something thin because we not only have to set it in the X and Y dimension but also the Z axis. Calibrate that axis we have to put a piece of something thin between the bead and material and once you will feel some resistance while moving it, it's fine. It's just basically like calibrating a 3D printer. Alright, so right now it is fine. To save all of that you have to just click on this thing right here, it looks like GPS on your smartphone on all of the axes and right now we are in the point zero zero zero. Before we start milling, make sure to move the z-axis a little bit so that you wouldn't turn on the Dremel while it is touching the material. Now we can click upload g-code, bold test that nc, click open. It take a while to load it but here it is, our design ready to start. All we have to do is click right here, but of course, remember to turn on your Dremel. Milling is a very messy process, so you must have a vacuum cleaner. I'm going to set Dremel to like 6 or 8 on its scale, and if it will start making odd sounds while milling, I will make it a little bit higher. And of course, remember about safety glasses, because safety is number one priority.
and there is our ready bowl. It looks very nice, but we have to finish it with a file, we'll do that in a minute. And it took only, only half an hour to finish this thing, not bad at all. Pretty good result. As you could see, the feed rate was pretty high and you should definitely start with a little bit smaller feed rate, you know, just to start. Uh, also, I didn't mention the bit that I used. This is the same bit that I used in my previous video and it will be linked down in the description, so go check it out. And now let's finish this thing. And that's everything you should know about how to use Dremel CNC to get pretty nice results. I'm really happy of how it turned out. Remember that if you want to build my machine, there are links in the description to everything you should know. There is Facebook group, remember to join the Facebook group if you want. Maybe ask some questions or share your progress on the machine. There are links to STL files, there are links to parts, to bits, basically everything. And also my other videos because I already made 4 videos about this machine. I hope this video somehow clarify how to use my machine and now we will be more confident in using it. Thank you very much for watching, happy making, bye.